Hi guys, so today we are continuing our non-objective painting. So non-objective painting is a painting that has no objective, as Jonathan said yesterday, which is perfect description. Um, I think that was Jonathan. Um, it has, it is a picture of nothing. So we're going to go file new. We're just doing this non-objective artwork as our background for our piece. So we're going to call this piece, you know, your name, if you haven't set this up already, and pattern as a metaphor for life's routines. And I want you to set it up as 19 by 13. or 13 by 19, 300 pixels per inch, and your background should always be transparent, okay? So um, actually, I, I really like to have my width longer than my height so I can have a rectangle, and then we're going to say okay. Okay. So here we have our canvas. And I want everybody to have three layers of painting. And these layers are just your painting layers. This is our non-objective painting. And it's basically our background. And as we said yesterday, this painting sets the mood for our artwork. The mood is set with colors. And see, I'm using green and blues. And I said that my colors were going to be blue-green. So um, with any layer you can start on, um, you know, you can draw just a regular color. Don't love it, so I'm going to undo it. Command Z. Um, all this stuff should be normal. Your opacity should be 100%. Your flow should be 100%. You know, you could change those, um, but change them back because otherwise somebody might get confused. Um, here's all our different brushes, but we have even more brushes. My favorite brushes are the wet media brushes. So if you click on this little tiny arrow, click on this little tiny arrow here, go down to your wet media brushes. I like to append it. That means it's going to add them to the list. If you just hit OK, it'll, um, it'll just change the list. So now I have the brushes that I had before. But down at the bottom, I have these wet media brushes, which are super cool. OK, so let's try this one first. I'm going to make this pretty big. And I can just you know drag it around, do whatever I want with it. Um, if I go to this little menu, right at the top, click it, I can change the orientation of this. So now, when I draw it, it looks a little different. Um, I can change it so it looks like this when I draw it. See how I can get di different directions out of it by changing those things? Um, spacing makes it more of a polka dot. And no spacing makes it more of a line. So see how that works? It's kind of interesting. Um, kind of fun to play around with. All right, so we do our whole design there however we want. You might change colors. You might try some different brushes. One of my favorite brushes is also this brush. So um, I changed colors, and I'm going to use it as a stamp. I love to just stamp because um, you create like a little pattern. But this, you can experiment with drawing with it too. And then it creates this kind of line, these lines. Um, so again, dots, lines, whatever you want to do. Yeah, I'm just recording, so. OK. Um, you're going to want to do paintings on all three layers. And you'll start to get a really layered, textured, non-objective painting. OK. So now if I draw on this layer down here, Maybe I want to get just a shade different color of blue. And when see how when I draw on this layer, it goes behind all the cool stuff that I did on that top layer, which is pretty neat, I think. Um, now that I'm starting to fill this layer with a color, I can even drop down to this layer, maybe try a different shade of green. And in there, I'm going to try this gradient. I'm just going to try and bring a gradient behind. And some of you know how to do that, and some of you don't, and that's okay. It doesn't matter. 
Um, you can play around with it. So you got your paint bucket and your gradient right here that you can play around with. Notice it used the two colors that are in my color palette right now. You got your paint brush. You got all your different brushes that you can use. Now the other thing that we can use that um, we haven't really talked about is your eraser. And so um, just by removing cool marks from the piece, you create some interesting stuff. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a neat brush to use as an eraser. And I'm just gonna go in here and start erasing. And notice when I erase from this top layer, if I turn these off, it's taking out only 50%, right? Because this is at a 50% opacity. So I need to turn that back up to 100. And when I go in here, I'm creating a totally different texture on top of those lines that I made. And now I can see through to the other layers. And so that gets to be really fun. Another thing we can do is we can create a pattern with, you know, squares. And I, I like to sometimes just make a bunch of squares. I'm just holding down the shift key and I'm making a bunch of squares. And I'm going to go ahead and pick a layer to work on and get a paintbrush. And I'm going to choose maybe a darker shade of green. Because remember I was talking about how my mood is going to be kind of darker. Um, so I'm just going to just draw just inside those boxes. And, and you can only draw inside a selection. But notice it's not going over everything because it's the second layer down. So now I could go up to the top layer and I can move those boxes if I wanted to. And I just moved parts of this this artwork. And I could go in and erase them. Parts of them. And I could deselect or I could go select inverse. And it's just fun to keep layering and adding stuff. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my brush. And it'll only go outside of those boxes now. In the end, you're going to have a really cool non-objective painting that'll be the base for your um, pattern artwork. And this should be done by the end of the period today. If you do get done early, you can go into Chrome and you could actually start searching for images to use for this project. And when you do that, I want you to make a folder just for images for this project. So, if I can get my internet to work for me here. Go to Google. And then from there, we need to start thinking, what is this person's life like that we're, we're studying the patterns of their life so what images come to mind what are some of the things that you listed off yesterday and remember I said I was listing off things about my dog so if I were to start to look up images that related to those things like a dog bowl like if this is something that I want to somewhere incorporate into my artwork I might choose I'm, I'm gonna choose something very simple like this one um, I'm gonna right click on it, save image as, and then I'm going to make sure that I put this not only in my folder, but in a folder for this project. So if I find my folder with my name on it, there's my folder, Liz Dilly. And looks, I have my name assignment in there, but now I need a new folder. So I'm going to click new folder down here and put pattern 
as a metaphor for life's routines. And I'm going to create that folder, and that's where I'm going to save any of the images that I want to use for this project. So you have two tasks today. You have to finish your non-objective painting, and then you have to start to find some images that you might want to use in your final artwork. And if you have you know, four or five images tomorrow and you have your painting finished, um, you're good to go. And one last thing, um, remember we talked about color wheels and complementary colors. This artwork right now is um, it's very, it's very much cool colors. It might be nice just to hit it with just a tiny little bit of a complementary color, even if it's subtle, even if we make it really small and only just put like a couple flecks of accent color here or there. Um, that that gives um, that color behind it a little bit more dimension. So we so we want to make sure that. We do just a little bit of that. Not too much, but a little bit. So it still gives it that feeling of kind of sadness, but I have a couple little pops of color to help brighten it up. All right. Good luck.